Whether you love to drive or just have to do it out of necessity, accidents happen and sometimes they're not your fault, which is why technologies like dash cams might come in handy for you. Here at Auto Academics, we drive cars all the time. And so when Masigo reached out to us to sponsor a video on their latest dash cam, we were more than happy to partner with them. They sent us their A330D model and that's what we're going to take a look at today. Now, if at the end of this video you'd like to purchase one, they're available on Amazon for $250. I have an affiliate link down in the description for you to use where Auto Academics would get a percentage of sales if you'd like to buy us a coffee or something. Not to mention, you'd save 5% on your purchase. So, let's get started. All right. Now, when I first open up the box, I've got a SanDisk Ultra 32 gig SD card, which is pretty nice. You know, SanDisk, SanDisk is a reputable brand, and um, I'm not positive if they all come with a memory card inside the box, but my review unit definitely came with one, so that's a nice feature to have. So I don't have to worry about sourcing one of those myself. Next, we've got a larger box here that I'll take out. And uh, on that it says Masigo dash cam. So let's open that up and see what we're working with here. All right, first we have uh, one of the mounts, one of the adhesive or the adhesive mount. We have power cable. And then we have, uh, assuming, I assume this is the unit itself, as well as the user manual for the product. Inside of this little packet, there's also another um, adhesive patch. Put this to the side, let's open up this box here. Okay, not too bad. To be honest, I was kind of expecting this to be a little bit larger than what it was. So I'm pleasantly surprised at the size of this. Um, yeah, okay. We'll get into the details of that in just a second. Now, uh, in the second box, which is a little smaller, this one is the rear cam. So we'll take a quick look at that. All right, right on top, this box is actually fairly light. And wow, this is the rear cam and it's very light. I'm actually pretty impressed with, with the, um, the weight of it. It has an adhesive patch on the back there or adhesive pad on the back. It looks like there's a USB-C connection there. And um, it says Masigo on the front and we've got our lens there as well. Okay, next we have, this looks like this is the cable to connect, the rear cable to connect it to the, um, the primary camera to give it power. Uh, it is USB-C on both ends, that's nice. And if I remember correctly, this cable is 20 feet long, so um, if, uh, I'll, I'll put the, uh, if it's something different, I'll put the specs down either in the description or, um, or in, actually put it somewhere on the screen there. <laughs> All right. And then last but not least, there is another adhesive pad here. So they give you some backup adhesive pads as well as there are some that are already on the devices pre-attached. 
<laughs> All right, future me here and the table is magically cleaned up. So let's take a look at the main unit. It's made out of plastic, has a 140 degree camera on one side and a three inch IPS display on the other. This unit also has GPS, Wi-Fi, and parking surveillance, as well as supports over the air firmware updates. The display is probably the quickest way to adjust the settings, but Masego does have an app for both iOS and Android to do the same, as well as update the firmware on your camera. You can also review the footage on your phone via this app. Once you're all set up, a heads up display is present showing your recording status, vehicle speed, as well as day, date, and time while you're driving. The rear camera is smaller, has a 145 degree lens, and connects to the primary unit with the 20 foot cable. Like the main unit, it's made out of plastic, mounts with an adhesive pad, and can rotate to help you get the best angle. Now, let's talk a bit more about the cameras. They record in high dynamic range, or HDR, and use a Sony Starvis image sensor. The front camera has an f1.4 aperture, and the rear an f1.6 aperture, which reportedly help with low light conditions. Installation isn't difficult, but it can be tedious depending upon how neat you want your cable management to be. I placed the main camera on the opposite side of my rear view mirror, with the rear camera centered at the top of the back window. Because this unit is for review, I didn't mount the wires permanently. It's also recommended that you test out your cameras before mounting, you know, just in case to make sure everything works. All right, now let's take a look at some of the footage while I share more of the camera specs with you. If you choose to only use the front camera, it can record at 1600p at 60 frames per second, 1600p at 30 frames per second, 1080p at 60 frames per second or 1080p at 30 frames per second. But why would you want to do that since it comes with two cameras? At which point the front camera is limited to 1600p 30 frames per second. The rear records solely in 1080p 30 frames per second. All footage is saved to a class 10 U3 or above rated micro SD card and the unit can handle cards up to 512 gigabytes. For reference, a 32 gigabyte card should give you two hours and 31 minutes of recording time, and the 512 gigabyte card, a little over 40 hours. Footage is saved as MP4 or TS files, which I believe are MPEG-2, and I'm using the former because it's more common, although it does still require a special app if you want to review your footage on your PC. I used VLC Media Player, and it can be found in the Microsoft App Store. Once the memory card is full, it continues to record in a loop. So once my 32 gig card is filled up, it will record over whatever happened two and a half hours earlier. The unit can supposedly even repair corrupt files automatically, but we hope it never comes to that. Overall, I think the footage looks pretty decent. The rear camera is a bit blurry off center, but that's more likely due to the tint on my windows. So I won't hold that against the camera itself. The last feature is called Parking Lot Surveillance Mode. It requires a constant power supply, but will automatically activate after the vehicle is stationary for at least 10 minutes. If an impact is detected by the built-in G sensor, both the front and rear cameras will automatically start recording and lock the first clip so that it will not be overwritten by continuous recording. If I were to throw a few things on my wish list, I wish that the cable to the rear camera was thinner. I don't know if that's possible while still transmitting a 1080p feed, but a thinner cable would make hiding it in the car's panels easier. Also, I wish the mounts were suction cup as opposed to adhesive. I've never been a fan of sticking adhesives to my cars, and I'd like the ability to mount this in different cars since I drive different cars all the time. I mean, I actually had to force time to drive my own car so I could do this review. Besides those two things, I think this camera is priced competitively for its feature set and works well. I want to thank Masigo again for sponsoring this video, and don't forget that we have a discount code so you can save 5%, as well as Auto Academics affiliate link in the description below. So with all the craziness out there, do you think dash cams have become a necessary tech and security feature? Let us know in the comments section below. As always, if you like this video, Give it a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss what we have coming up next. 
I'm Chris from Auto Academics. Thanks for watching.